I think we're good.
In order for them to get to the promised land, they had to shut their mouths and follow God. The Israelites sinned by grumbling against God for bringing them out of Egypt and into the wilderness. They grumbled about something new happening in their lives. They couldn't take the stretching of it. They wanted a miracle for their lives to be perfected in a week of an hour. God got so fed up with their complaining, God punished them with a plague of fiery serpents killing many of the Israelites. After much discomfort, finally, somebody say finally, the Israelites confessed their sins of complaining and begged for mercy. All I can say is it's hard. It must have been a terrible moment to make a group stop complaining and beg for mercy. It must have been something horrible happening. Makes you think about our great pandemic. Is God trying to tell us something? Is there an underlying spiritual current flowing where God is trying to tell us something in the middle, in the midst of this great pandemic? And we need to be redirect, we need to redirect our lives back to God. Maybe there's something in this pandemic that's trying to get us to stop from doing something and focus on the cross. When I look around this Key West city, I see so many moving vans. More and more moving vans I see each day. I see bigger moving vans each day. And I see more and more stores to sell here in Key West. We are living in a great pandemic. I can only imagine the pain was great for the Israelites. The sorrow must have been very deep. Shocking to the point of being unbelievable what they were going through. The trauma of being, of being, of experiencing judgment from the hand of God. That's serious. Judgment came because they complained. We don't focus on that too much. We think it's all, we just complain for the hell we were thinking about it. But judgment came on them, a harsh judgment came on them because they were complainers. They complained against the will of God. So God in God's mercy, God is so good. God in God's mercy delivered them. Not this time from the hand of the harsh Pharaoh, but God delivered them from themselves. For the words that were from the words that was coming out of their mouths. You know, we know that verse surprise, six and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Not so, not so, not so. In this case, their words brought destruction into their lives. God told Moses to make a bronze serpent and hold it up on a pole. Whoever looked at the bronze serpent was saved from a fiery serpent. They were given new life, born anew. Now John places the story early, the story early on in the Gospel of John. It's almost a foreshadowing shattering of what's to come. Where we see a developing theology of the cross, the lifting up of the Son of Man, which makes eternal life possible. It's God's love uh, 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 for us that we will receive the eternal life. It's God's love, the cross is God's love to the world. It's God's gift of the Son so that those who believe in him will not perish but have eternal life. And the cross is also the judgment or condemnation of those who do not believe in the Son. As John's story serves as a source of memory, power, it also serves as a glimpse of the future. In Numbers the Israelites, their memory was 
blocks all of that. Complaining blocks the fact that God is trying to get us someplace. Complaining just keeps us looking back. They were not remembering that God was with them in the dash. The poisonous serpents helped to redirect their memory. A harsh judgment helped to redirect their memory from being grumblers and murmurers to remembering God is at hand. From complaining to remembering that God is the one who's in covenant relationship with them. That God has a power that can't be overthrown. That God is the Alpha and the Omega and that He is. God is stretching, is stretching us in time. God stretches us in, in the dash of life. Don't be afraid of that. John is stressing, remember the old, old story that complaining does not fly in the face of God. John is showing God requires complaint free living. Living in a trusting relationship with God. That God is in control. God sets the standards for our living. So John tells us to look up to God and be saved. He didn't come to, Jesus didn't come to condemn this world, yet he has the power to bring our worst fears on us. Look up. Be saved from yourself. This fact um, becomes a larger narrative for our living. It becomes the backdrop of, for how we live in the dash, how we live in the stretching moments of life. It is our story. It is where the action is. From complaining to remember that our eyes should be on the cross, not on the go back to Egypt, be committed, them committed. That committee that always wants us to keep destruction stirred up, always wants to put distractions in the way of what, uh, what God is doing. We are to follow the path of God, to be satisfied with how God is leading us. If God is leading us straight up the mountain, go up the mountain without complaining. If God is leading us around the mountain, go around the mountain without complaining. If God is leading us through the Red Sea, go through the Red Sea without complaining. Stretching develops our character. We walk by faith, not by sight. Go through life trusting in God. This is our story. As Christians, as men and women and children of God, this is our story. We don't get out of this. We are to look to the cross and we are to remember that we can rely on what happened at the cross. We are saved at the cross. We are delivered at the cross. We are set free at the cross. This is our story. This is our story. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burdens of my sin rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. This is our story.
and live holding on to the cross. God is for us, church, throughout the stretching in our lives. Amen.